Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Comexus Cast Daily, all the news you need to know from our inbox to yours. I'm Matthew McGordy, the videographer and podcaster here at Comexus, and today I am joined by the lead strategist at Comexus, Philip Brooks. Good morning. And the SEO project manager here at Comexus, Amy Leach. Hello. So today we're talking about uh, Google's featured snippets. Um, so earlier this week, Google released a blog post about featured snippets. And for those of you who don't know what they are, uh, basically, if you type in typically a, a question into Google, or if you ask a question through a voice assistant of some kind, um, Google on the web page will load up. Um, it'll show you a couple ads probably in the front, depending on what you're searching. And then it'll show you a little snippet of a website um, that normally has some sort of answer. Um, hopefully, the correct answer, though, in some cases, relevant to your search. Yeah, yeah re relevant to your search. Um, so this is both for written and video content. I know sometimes when I Google something like a, like a tutorial, something videos come up, and then they also have, hey, you should start here at this video, and this is where you'll find the information, which I think is quite useful. Um, so just to give a, a general idea about how accurate these tend to be, before we get into some of the the questionable inaccuracies that they've had. Um, a third-party test uh, in 2017 done by Stone Temple found a 97.4% accuracy rate for featured snippets and related formats like the knowledge graph information. Um, and typically, these are used best for mobile devices um, where you don't want to click a bunch of links or voice assistants. Um, we talked um, the other day about how a lot of people just want direct answers, right. um, which this helps, um, though there are some, some questionable things that happen. So uh, in this blog post, uh, Google also covered a lot of the things that went wrong um, <laughs> with with uh, these featured snippets, including things like, um, if you, depending on your search query, you might uh, find out that in, inaccurately, uh, Go uh, Obama attempted a coup of some kind, <laughs> or depending on what you typed in, um, you might think that Google is promoting um, women hatred. Um, so I, I guess my question is, you know, how, how do these things kind of happen, and, and what are some ways that um, we think people are trying to sort of game the system in, in this sense? Well, I, I think you know the problem, the proliferation of r responses to a lot of these results, um, you know, really confuse the machine learning aspect of what comes back when these when search results are delivered, um, you know, and based you know based on a lot of the ranking factors that they have there. But you know, you see, you know, you just watch your Facebook feed if you have at least the the you know kind of the different types of opinions that you see in there and the types of sources being ser you know, served up by your friends and family, your family especially, um, you, know, you may see some of these, you know, these results that are given credence and, you know, Google's machine learning doesn't really know the difference and if it sees that people are utilizing these particular sources over and over again, it's going to start to give them some sort of credence and, you know, authority and that's where they're going to start showing up. That's true. Uh, so one of the things, uh, Amy, you and I talked about a little bit before we did the podcast was kind of the ways that people can uh, and brands can try and get onto featured snippets. Um, and it seems like at the moment there's a couple relative ways, but nothing super clear cut. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that pretty much sums it up nicely. I mean, um, we have seen clients get on rich snippets um, in different ways. I mean, interestingly, we have had some where they had some really good content written about maybe a, a, a bit of a niche kind of service, and they managed to get the rich snippet for that service, which is great. Anyone search and it's going to see you. That's an awesome mm -hmm. place to be. Um, we've also seen it for um, kind of question answer stuff. Um, which is also really good. I mean, like you said, most of these rich snippets are based on a question. Um, uh, they're also used very much for uh, voice-related uh, searches, so that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. that they would be question-based. <coughs> um, you know, as for getting a rich snippet, I think what becomes tough is if you're typing in a question, as we know with Google searches, there's a million ways to kind of say the same thing. Um, so if you're thinking a question is relevant, there's no rich snippet that exists, and you go, I'm going to go for it. I'm mm -hmm. going to answer this question. You might get it, but there's mm -hmm. also still no guarantee that it's a high traffic search where, mm -hmm. <laughs> where you're going to get a lot from it. So so to what extent does doing some keyword, key, uh, keyword research or, or some long tail keyword research in advance sort of help that? It's a little difficult yeah. to do long tail okay. keyword research. Um, because again, the longer your keyword gets, more like a question, the more variations you can get mm -hmm. on the 
same kind of wording. I, I think your best bet is just to really consider what somebody might be asking. There might be some ideas with formatting if you have a short answer, because we know a rich snippet's going to be a short answer, and then have your longer content within um, a blog post, a service page, whatever uh, you're trying to provide, um, or if you are specifically writing content to answer a question, that might help you get a rich snippet. Um, <clears throat> but um, but as for researching longer tail keywords, it's a, it's a little bit tough. Yeah, I think it's it's a, it's it's the problem is is that if you're looking at it as though you're researching long tail keywords, you're mm -hmm. probably looking at it incorrectly. Okay. Because in this case, you're actually doing semantic search, which is mm -hmm. a full sentence that actually speaks out exactly what you're trying to search for. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're trying to create content, you actually need to come up with that whole statement okay. that people are asking, that question, that, 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 that query is, you know, like you said, are lizards good pets? Or you know, are reptiles good pets? You need to anticipate what that question is mm -hmm. and all the different permutations of that question to be able to become the most authoritative response response mm -hmm. for it um, and you know that's not that's that's a lot bigger than a long tail keyword would normally be mm -hmm. you're not just searching for a key term you're actually trying to answer actively answer a question okay. so I think that's really how it, it you know that's and that's something that's been proliferating in uh, you know in search for you know for years now and I think you know I, I think the, the ultimate rise of it has been the voice search you know functionality because that's how people ask questions that's true. Uh, so, m speaking of uh, are reptiles good or bad pets, one of, one of the things I really liked about this Google blog post was how transparent it actually was, and I think a lot of that transparency came from, you know, some of the the fair criticisms that were aimed at it. Um, we you know we spoke about voice assistants about how, you know, sometimes getting direct answers. Um, can be good, but you're also uh, putting a lot of faith into into the algorithm and into the system. Whereas sometimes when you're doing Google searches, uh, there isn't necessarily a, a clear cut answer. So, for example, um, the the post which uh, I will link in the in the description of the podcast talked about you know what to do with certain questions and and, and the ways that they're practically trying to to solve them. Um, so for example, people who search are reptiles good pets or are reptiles bad pets, um, Google is saying that theoretically they should be receiving the same answer and the same snippet because they're basically asking the two sides of the same question, uh, more or less. But practically, people were receiving two separate answers, one for each question. Um, so the one thing that Google is thinking about doing is putting potentially multiple snippets, um, one for sort of each answer um, for both search queries. Hmm. Um, and they're thinking of doing that for a couple other things. For example, if you ask Google, you know, how do I set up a call forwarding, um, maybe they'll have one basically window tab-ish thing. Um, and you'll be able to choose, you know, AT&T or T-Mobile or am I doing a landline or something like that. And that's the way they might in the future sort of figure out the way that, that, that this is going to be going to, to best deliver um, an answer, which I think is, is certainly interesting. Um, the the my favorite part of the the Google post though, um, and I don't I don't know if you guys had a, had a chance to take a look at this was when they talked about how did Romans tell time, <laughs> um, so the question was how did Roman tell Romans tell time at night, and the answer they gave was uh, through sundials. Which is not true <laughs> because it's nighttime. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but apparently, uh, th they mentioned that a lot of people actually will click through on these uh, snippets to get even more information. And you would later find the correct information, um, which was a part of the blog post that they, that they linked to, but not necessarily featured in the snippet, which I thought was particularly interesting. Um, so, any any last thoughts on these snippets, guys? Oh, I think Amy really, you know, and you guys have summed up. But I think Amy's right. It, it, it's really if you can get yourself in there, it's a coup for organic ranking. So, you know, again, I urge you when you're creating content to think about answering users' queries as completely and as transparently and as fully as possible. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to today's episode of the Comexus Cast Daily. Check us out tomorrow for more of the latest trending news. Have a great day.